Hey guys, how are you? Today I'm actually here to take some photos of a pool. This job is actually for a company that does polish concrete and they do a lot of pool areas. Actually, the concrete looks amazing when they do polish concrete. But anyway, I'm here to just show you what I'm going to be doing today. As I said, today is only photography, no video. We're going to be doing some drone photography and also some ground photography with my camera. I'll show you my setup in a little bit, but I just want to show you what the pool looks like. Check that out. It looks amazing. So we're going to be shooting, focusing mainly on the concrete. And we're going to make sure we cover detailed wide shots as well. We picked specifically a time of the day to shoot this pool you gotta be careful when the shadows are gonna be the best so in this case we picked he it's 9 30 a.m so we picked between 9 9 30 today was a little bit cloudy in the morning so i waited until the sun came out and then i came here i only live like half hour away so i got here like maybe five minutes away also very important we have to make sure the day before that you or the owner or someone <laughs> can help out by getting any hoses or a robot or anything out of the pool because it's happened to us in the past that the owner just gets the robot out or the the big hose out of the pool and then it wets around the pool area and because it's concrete it actually takes a while to dry so we couldn't do it one time and then we had to come back after so now we make sure that before they don't rinse off anything or nothing especially with concrete on pool areas is very important the first thing that we're going to do is fly the drone the reason that i'm flying the drone first is because right now it's not windy and it's all perfect i can do some photos if it's windy but then i can't really fly the drone if it's windy so i always used to like to get the draw the drone first once I do the drone, then I move into doing the ground photography. But the drone is the first thing that I like to do. And also because it's really fun, so I like to start with the fun. And here we got our drone, who actually has, actually has a name. Her name is Frida. She's a girl. And it's a Mavic Air 2. And I'm actually, I have a, a circular polarizer there. I'm only doing photography today. So... I don't need an ND filter, I just need a, the polarizer just to remove those reflections. And look, this drone is a couple years old, it's not the latest model, but it is it is amazing. It still works out wonders for me. It's definitely been a drone that has definitely paid its money back and, and many times more. I, I really love it. I don't really feel like I need an upgrade just of yet. I have considered it, but not just of yet. Let's take her. Let's take Frida up in the air. Cool. All right, so we've done the drone. Now I'm moving into doing the photos with the camera. So I've got the A7 IV and it has the Tamron 17 to 28 f2.8. And then I've got a circular polarizer to avoid those reflections, especially in the water or in the concrete as well. Now, this camera shoots amazing photos, but also I don't need an ND filter today. I only need a circular polarizer because I'm not shooting video, so I'm not really bothered about my shutter speed. Now, let me tell you about the, the camera settings that I've got. Let's pop it here. On, where is it here? So I've got F14, and then I've got, oops, sorry, I've got 100 of a second, and then ISO 100, and everything else is manual. Now, let me tell you why I have F14, such a high F stop. And that is because I actually find when I do some wide shots, because what I want to focus is the concrete. I want everything to be in focus, especially the concrete. And I found like actually the first time that I did photos of polished concrete, 
I only had like f5.6 or f6 or something. And it wasn't really working when I saw on editing. There were some parts that were a little bit out of focus and I just like perfection. So from there on, I put a higher shot speed to make sure everything is in focus. And the other thing that I want to say is the focus mode. I actually got, can't remember what it's called. I think it's the, let me see where is it. The focus area is the the, la the spot, large spot. So let me just see. So you can see the. Oh, is it? We have to see. Huh? Oh, there you can see there. Is that square there? That red square. So I can move it exactly to the part of the concrete that I want, and then I take the shot. So with the wide angle lens, what I'm going to do. Sorry that I keep on flipping between the two uh, cameras. So I'm going to take wide angle shots pretty much from every corner and every angle. I'm going to be walking around literally taking wide angle shots. And I have to be careful that I expose for the concrete. Some of the areas in the background are going to be very dark because of the shadows. However, I'm only doing handheld shooting today. And the reason I'm not shooting with a tripod and blend the exposures is because my main focus of the things that I want to highlight are in the in the sun and are outside. If the main thing that I wanted to shoot was in the dark, I probably will do some other type of shooting. But today I'm focusing on the the areas that are gonna be bright, the concrete. So the shadows, yeah they're gonna be shadows, but I don't mind the contrast. It's gonna look amazing gonna get into this and then after that I'm gonna change the lens and do some detail shots okay so now it's time to do some detail shots and I've selected my Tamron 28 to 75 f 2.8 and with this one I actually also want the concrete to be in focus so I find that even though I'm getting close to the subjects I still remain into like around f11 f14 sometimes even more f20 and I do that just so everything stays in focus because the concrete is very important that it's in focus. And the background, believe it or not, when you're close and you're shooting concrete and little architectural landscaping things, things in the background are still blurry, like to get that bokeh effect, the, uh, the out of focus or depth of field, blurry depth of field effect. And the other thing I want to say is when you're shooting a pool, I actually do find that that is when your creativity really shows. That is when like, people that are amazing photographers or amazing videographers, that's when the creativity, creativity really shows. So I feel like when you're shooting something like, I don't know, for example, an excavator digging a backyard, like you have to be creative, obviously, you have to have the eye, but there's a lot of things going on, it's easy to choose. When you're shooting something that is not animated and it's not moving, you have to be more creative what is there like maybe a little plant where you can get a different perspective is there how are you going to shoot like the steps you want to go low or high take different perspectives through the glass fence get something out of focus that's when it gets really creative and that's why i really love shooting these type of jobs all right and i'm here just want to show you a little bit here just on the the previous screen of the camera the shots that i took so this was some of the first wide angle shots he was at f10 as you can see handheld so i went around pretty much like around every angle as you can see and i kept it around the same yeah went more f14 and i was focusing around this area of the concrete down here then we move into like more angles I pretty much try to do every single angle and then I can select in the computer obviously I'm not gonna send all of these photos to the client but that's the way that I like to work and then he we did that shot that the client specifically asked like looking through that lavender there and did a couple of those one in portrait I opened the gate and then also focusing on the steps because they're also part of the polished concrete. I tried to use that as a bit of a perspective. There wasn't many like plants or anything around to do like that kind of like depth of field effect so the foreground is blurry. 
and then I did that one as a kind of like a close-up detail and then here's when I changed the lens to the 28 to 75 and I started doing some detail shots as you can see so always focusing on the concrete but also showing the environment and yeah I just take a lot look here I used I went like up in that little upper level and I took that shot through the plants I can actually show you that shot was through here pretty much and I use the the greenery in my foreground and here you can keep uh, looking at the here I changed to f5.6 on the next one because I wanted the foreground to be more blurry and then yeah just a few more of the steps as well they look very similar actually to the other ones some close-ups again getting really creative because there's nothing happening in regards of no action no movement so here I've changed to you know f18 when I'm going really close because I actually I found when I was at like f6.3 and I was focusing on the concrete a lot of the concrete was out of focus so now I go like f18 or something like that and this keeps everything really in focus and the ba the background still like blurry as you can see because I'm getting really close down there I'm getting really really close like pretty much down to the same level as the concrete and then I'm pretty sure he did I change the lens here yeah here the last few shots actually were with the 70 to 180 yeah, I'm pretty sure all of those ones are with the 70 to 180. I, look, I actually, just to finish off, what I would like to say about the 70 to 180 is that that lens I actually bought it just to have in my bag because I thought if I ever need to shoot something from a distance, I need that longer range. And guess what? I absolutely love that lens. I use it almost on all my photo shoots. It doesn't matter if I'm like, close to where I'm shooting, but just that compression, that perspective. And if you talk to any photographer, that 70 to 200 range, 70 to 200 millimeter range, is just like amazing. And I just like to get those extra shots always with that lens because it always gives us a very, very cool perspective. So just as food for thought, the first few years that I shot, like so I've been shooting photography for five years, the first pretty much four years I didn't have that lens and I just bought it one time because I thought I just in case I need it in case I'm far on a shoot that I was going and I kind of like used it kind of not because it was very high pace and I couldn't really change lenses much but then after that I just used it for one photo shoot and then I was like oh man this lens is never leaving my camera bag I always bring it with me well thank you so much for following me in this uh, behind the scenes shoot I hope that you enjoy this behind of scenes content. I actually would like to do it more, but I love the times I'm shooting with time, you know, it has to go fast and things are happening and I don't get the time to do it. But whenever I get a shoot like this, that there is extra time to shoot and there is no model. So I don't have to go to another shoot right now. Actually, I had three shoots today, one earlier that got canceled because it was too cloudy and then I've got one more in the afternoon. So at like 5 p.m. so now just time to go home empty my memory cards it is a Saturday today empty my memory cards maybe have a little bit of the of the photos I'm not sure if I'll start editing editing them today uh, just take a few emails take a little bit of time off maybe and then just get everything ready charge the cameras and just have everything prepared for my other shoot at it's gonna be around 5 in the afternoon but anyway thank you so much